Bridging DAWs, digital audio workstations, software applications for recording studios. So what we're going to be looking at is how we can use GarageBand, Ableton Live, and Pro Tools all together. We're looking at not just the overall strengths of each DAW, but also looking at how this can refine your creative process and obviously your production skills and things related to DAW usage. Things to keep in mind are that not all DAWs are created equal. Different DAWs have different strengths, different weaknesses, different creative purposes and priorities depending on how they were designed, why they were designed in many cases. And more than just a review, the idea of this project is really to help you focus on how different DAWs can be used in different parts of your creative process in different ways. The truth is, is that you can do everything that we're about to do in one of any number of DAWs. You don't have to use multiple. But I think it's important to see how different DAWs can allow you to prioritize different things in different ways. Um, they, they work kind of more efficiently, if you will, depending on which DAW you're using and what your goal is. And it's good to explore that um, in terms of long-term creative goals, certainly. The other thing to remember is that there are an enormous number of DAWs that we're not even going to touch on in this project. So many that we, we would be here for a very long time just listing them. Uh, some of them you may even be familiar with, like FL Studio or Reason or Studio One. Uh, GarageBand has its sort of big brother application, if you will, uh, Logic Pro. Um, there is any number of others. Uh, there's a free one out there called Audacity, for example. Uh, it doesn't have any MIDI functionality. Uh, the, the user interface isn't a lot uh, to look at, but it's incredibly functional. Um, and some of the effects that are built in with it for free are remarkably well designed. The algorithm that they use, for example, for their pitch shifting in uh, Audacity is really incredible. Um, so you just never know what might be the best tool um, depending on the circumstances. So we're going to use um, GarageBand for the purpose in this project of generating some ideas. We're going to use Ableton Live for the purpose of developing an arrangement of those ideas. And then we're going to use Pro Tools last as a way to do final mixing. Now, something else to keep in mind is that you can certainly interchange these roles depending on what you get comfortable with, depending on what your uh, goals are. Um, you can generate ideas in Pro Tools and develop arrangements in GarageBand, and you can use Ableton as a sketch pad, and, and on and on and on. The variations are pretty much endless. Uh, but again, the idea of this project is really just to see what you can do uh, in a particular circumstance and just kind of see how that uh, maybe gives you a stepping off point for some other creative ideas in the future. So let's take a look really quick at uh, GarageBand and why we're using it uh, to generate musical ideas. First of all, GarageBand's just got this great ease of use. It's got these built-in loops, uh, the drummer track, and all these other things. It's just a really great place to simply just put down ideas and, and not get bogged down too much with the technical elements uh, involved. It's really user-friendly. Um, there are certainly some limitations. Um, and that's why people eventually step up into other DAWs a lot of times, uh, like Logic Pro, like I said, it's Big Brother. But on the other hand, um, there's a ton of incredible things done just in GarageBand. Um, another thing that sets GarageBand apart is that it has a fully functioning mobile version. Now, the mobile version is very different in some ways than the desktop version, but it is um, a fantastic tool as well. In fact, in some ways, people would argue that it's two separate DAWs, one that's mobile and one that's uh, on a desktop, but they are still both incredibly workable and usable um, depending on what it is you want to do. But again, just a fantastic place to start generating ideas. Now, Ableton Live is also great for generating ideas. It's, it's fantastic in that regard, but it has one feature that sets it apart um, from pretty much any other DAW and it's the fact that for all you can do in Ableton, you also have the ability, if you choose to, to take a nonlinear approach to arranging material. And what I mean by nonlinear approach is that in most DAWs, they're designed to work as an emulation of a tape player. That's really where it all comes from. 
And the idea in Ableton, though, is you can take sections, and instead of always going from point A to point B to point C, and so on, in Ableton, you can mix that order up on the spot, in the moment, however you want, make all these changes, and just have things happen very organically. Um, this is incredibly powerful um, and a really rare feature. Um, many, many years ago, one of the very first DAWs ever created was called Visions uh, by a company called Opcode. The program is no longer available. The company doesn't even any longer exist. But they had a feature very similar where you could essentially create sections of a piece that you were uh, working on and then you could type in, in real time, what section you wanted to have play when and it would play it back for you again basically in the moment, not nearly as refined as Ableton, but with the same kind of idea. But this idea of this nonlinear approach, the ability to change things around in the moment as you feel them, makes Ableton an especially powerful tool for coming up with an arrangement of the material that you're going to be playing. Um, Pro Tools is just a powerhouse when it comes to mixing. It just is. Um, it is considered the industry standard for mixing and, and there's a lot of arguments to be made about why that's not necessarily true anymore and the fact that we could certainly look at other software on equal footing. Um, but Pro Tools originally was one of the very first DAWs to be stable, to be reliable, to be available in a way that you could actually make music in a studio with it that wasn't like a just sort of a gimmick if you will. Um, the other thing about Pro Tools that is really exceptional is that it is completely open-ended. Um, if you can hear it, you can do it in Pro Tools. I'll grant you that the learning curve in Pro Tools for many people seems very steep um, and to some people cumbersome, um, but it's worth it um, in that it is again completely open-ended. Are there other DAWs that are equally flexible these days? Absolutely, but just over time Pro Tools has become the accepted industry standard, so I think it's important to at least explore it um, in the context of this particular project given its influence within the industry. I also did want to mention really quickly that there is this really cool utility in Pro Tools called Rewire, and what it lets you do basically is it allows you to synchronize Pro Tools and another DAW, for example, Ableton Live, and have you work with them simultaneously. It's a really great tool, and in some ways, it's a way to bridge the two DAWs together quite literally. But here's the thing about Rewire. It's a great tool. It does a lot of wonderful stuff, but it also, because you're running multiple DAWs at once on the same system, can really tax your computer CPU. Um, also, um, and perhaps more importantly in the context of this project, you need to have both pieces of software running simultaneously on the same system. They have to be linked together directly for it to work, which means there could be some infrastructure issues if you have both pieces of software, if they're the current versions or the versions that were done or that were used, excuse me, to uh, create the original material that you're now trying to synchronize and move over, for uh, example, in this case, talking about uh, Ableton Live over into Pro Tools. Um, it's definitely an option to explore, but um, it's also adding a whole lot of other variables. So I think the idea of working with stems coming out of GarageBand into Ableton and then stems coming out of Ableton into Pro Tools is probably better in the context of this project, if only so that you have the experience of working with stems and converting them into tracks and, and so on. But I did at least want to mention it uh, before we go on any further. So what's next? Well, what I want you to do is I want you to take a look at the project details. Um, and there's an accompanying tutorial video, and it walks you through starting to generate ideas in GarageBand, taking those ideas, moving them as stems into Ableton Live to create an arrangement, taking that arrangement and dumping those stems out, and moving everything into Pro Tools and doing your final mixing. Um, pretty much everything you are going to be doing is going to be stuff you've done before independently within each DAW, but now we're going to link them all together, and that's really the point of this particular project. Um, and like I said, it really does open some doors to what 
is possible. Um, and a lot of creative process ideas um, can really start to expand when we start to take a look at different roles and different purposes uh, within each DAW. Uh, the other thing to remember is that there is a concepts assessment that you're going to want to take when you're all done with the project to make sure that you're understanding sort of the, the overall um, structural elements of, of why this project exists and, and how the different DAWs interact with each other. Something else you might consider trying is how you might use the workflow of this project for future work. This idea of using certain tools for certain things and other tools for others as opposed to just a single tool for the whole way across. You may find you can get a more efficient and, and better result um, that way. Uh, you know, what are some ways you might change the roles of the DAWs beyond what gets talked about in this project? As I mentioned, you could certainly do idea generation in other software other than necessarily GarageBand. Um, what might that look like? What would be the advantage of that? What do you have access to maybe outside the scope of this project and how could you still apply the same concepts in a way to get your ideas um, presented that much more effectively? Um, you know, to that, to that extent, what are some things you could just simply change in your creative process? Taking again a look at the tools you have available and, and how you might expand uh, their usage or your perception of their usage. And then back to what we talked about at the beginning, how there are so many other DAWs beyond the scope of, of this project. Uh, what else might you consider exploring and why might those be helpful other than just, oh yeah, I also have this other piece of software I could use. Take a look at what else there might be out there um, and see how they relate to your goals and your process and, and what you can do with them.